Hello, so I will be reading um, the next chapter in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And this chapter is chapter 8, The Queen's Croquet Ground. And here's a picture to start us off with. A large rose tree stood near the entrance of the garden. The roses growing on it were white. But there were three gardeners busily painting the roses red. Why, they look just like playing cards, thought Alice. This was very strange. And she went closer to watch them. Look out now, Five. Don't splash paint on me like that. I couldn't help it, said Five. Seven bumped to my elbow. Seven looked up and said, That's right, Five. Always blame it on the others. You'd better not talk, said Five. I heard the Queen say yesterday you deserve to be beheaded. What for, said the one who had spoken first. That's none of your business, too, said Seven. Yes, it is his business, said Five. And I'll tell him. It was for bringing the cooked tulip roots instead of onions. Seven flung down his brush and had just begun. Well, of all the unfair things, when his eyes suddenly fell upon Alice as she stood watching them, he stood himself quickly. The others saw her, too, and all of them bowed. And here's a picture of when they saw Alice. Would you tell me, please, said Alice, why you are painting those roses? Two began in a low voice. Well, you see, miss, this should have been a red rose tree, and we put a white one in by mistake. If the queen found out, we would have our heads cut off, so we're doing our best to. At that moment, five who had been looking around the garden called out, The queen! The queen! The three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. There was a sound of many footsteps, and Alice looked around to see the queen. First came ten soldiers carrying clubs, who also looked like carts, with their hands and feet at the corners. Next came ten co co couriers decorated all over with diamonds. They walked two by two as the soldiers did. After these came in, the royal children with hearts upon their garments. There were ten of them, and they were jumping along hand in hand. Next came the guests, mostly kings and queens among them. Alice recognized the white rabbit. And here's a picture of the... Um, the cards coming in. It was smiling at everything that was said and went by without noticing her. Then followed the knave of hearts carrying the king's crown on a red velvet cushion. And last of all, at the end of the grand procession came the king and queen of hearts. Alice wasn't sure if she should lie down on her face like the gardener. She, sh she could not remember a rule about lying down for a procession. And besides, she thought... What is the use of a procession if people have to lie down upon their faces? Then they are not able to see it. So she stood still where she was and waited. When the procession came to Alice, they all stopped and looked at her. The queen said, Who is this? To the knave of hearts, who only bowed and smiled in reply. Fool, said the queen, tossing her head and turning to Alice. What is your name, child? My name is Alice, your majesty, said Alice, very politely as she thought. Why, they're only a pack of cards. I don't need to be afraid of them. And here's a picture of her talking to the queen. And who are these, said the queen, pointing to the three gardeners who were lying face down in front of the rose tree. How should I know, said Alice, surprised at her own courage. It's no business of mine. The queen turned red with fear and screamed, off with her head, off. Nonsense, said Alice very loudly, and the queen was silent. The king laid his hand upon the queen's arm and quietly said, My dear, she is only a child. The queen turned angry, angrily away from him and said to the knave, Turn them over. And here's a picture um, of the queen and the king and Alice. The knave carefully turned them over with one foot. Get up, said the queen in a loud voice. And the three gardeners instantly jumped up. They began bowing to the king, the queen, the royal children, and everybody else. Stop that, screamed the queen. You're making me dizzy. She turned to the rose tree and said, What have you been doing here? Your majesty said to going down on one knee as he spoke. We were trying. I see, said the queen, who was looking at the roses. Off with their heads. The royal group left. Three of the soldiers stayed behind to execute the gardeners, who ran to Alice for protection. You won't be executed, said Alice, and she put them into a large flower pot that stood near. The three soldiers wandered about looking for them and then quietly marched off after the others. And here's a picture of her hiding the cards. 
Are their heads off? shouted the queen. Their heads are gone, your majesty, the soldier shouted in reply. Can you play croquet? The soldiers were silent and looked at Alice as the question was meant for her. Yes, shouted Alice. Come on then, yelled the queen, and Alice joined the procession. It's a nice day, said a voice at her side. It was the white rabbit peeping into her face. Very, said Alice. Where's the duchess? Shh, said the rabbit. He looked over his shoulder and then raised himself up on tiptoe so he could whisper in her ear. She's been arrested and will be executed. What for, said Alice. Did you say what a pity, the rabbit asked? No, I didn't, said Alice. I said what for? She boxed the queen's ears, the rabbits began. The, the rabbit began. Alice laughed. Shh! The rabbit whispered. The queen will hear you. You see, the duchess was late, and the queen said, Get in your places! shouted the queen. People ran around in all directions. They finally settled down and began the game. Alice had never seen such a strange croquet ground. There were lots of hills and holds. The balls were live hedgehogs, and the mallets were live flamingos. The soldiers stood on their hands and feet to make the arches. Alice tried to hold her flamingo still, but it kept twisting around so it could look at Alice. She couldn't help laughing. When she finally got the flamingo to hold still, she looked down and found that the hedgehog had run away. And here's a picture of um, her trying to get a hold of the flamingo. Um... It was a hard and confusing game. The players played at the same time. No one took turns. They argued about everything, and the queen went stomping around screaming, off with his head or off with her head every minute. Alice began to feel very uneasy. She had not yet had an argument with the queen, but she knew that it might happen any minute. She started looking around for a way to leave when she noticed a curious appearance in the air, a grin. It's the Cheshire Cat, she said to herself. Now I'll have somebody to talk to. How are you doing, said the cat, as soon as there was enough mouth for it to speak with. Alice waited till the eyes appeared and then nodded. There's no use speaking to it till its ears have come, she thought. In another minute, the whole head appeared, and then Alice put down her flamingo. She began to tell the cat about the game. The cat seemed to think his head was enough, and no more of it appeared. I don't think they're, they play fairly, Alice said, and they all argue and they don't have any rules. You have no idea how confusing it is using flamingos and hedgehogs and arches that walk away. How do you like the queen? asked the cat. Not at all, said Alice. She so uh, just then she noticed that the queen was close behind her, listening. She went on. Likely to win, that's not worth finishing the game. The queen smiled and walked by. And here's a picture of her talking to the cat. And here's a picture of um, when the queen was behind her listening. Whom are you talking to, said the king, walking up to Alice and looking at the cat's head with curiosity. It's a friend of mine, a Cheshire cat, said Alice. I don't like the looks of it, said the king, but it may kiss my hands if it likes. I'd rather not, the cat remarked. Don't be disrespectful, said the king, and don't look at me like that. He got behind Alice as he spoke. A cat can look at a king, said Alice. I read that in a book somewhere. Well, it must be removed, said the king, and he called the queen. My dear, I wish you would have this cat removed. The queen had one of one way of settling problems, great or small. Off with his head, she said, without even looking up. I'll get the executioner myself, said the king, and he hurried off. He quickly returned with the executioner, and a crowd began to gather round. A disagreement began between the king and the executioner and the queen. They were all talking at once while the entire crowd was silent and uncomfortable. Alice asked if she could help settle the question. They all started speaking to her at once, so she found it very hard to know exactly what they said. The executioner's argument was that you couldn't cut off a head unless there was a body to cut it from. The king's argument was that anything that had a head could be beheaded. The queen's argument was that if somebody weren't done, something weren't done soon, then she'd have everybody executed. And here's a picture of them arguing. Alice could not think of anything else to say, but the cat belongs to the duchess. You'd better ask her about it. She's in prison, the queen said to the executioner. Bring her here. And the executioner went off like an arrow. The cat's head began fading away the moment the executioner was gone. By the time the executioner had come back with the duchess, the cat had disappeared completely. 
So the king and the executioner ran wildly up and down looking for the Cheshire Cat's head while the rest of the party went back to the game. And that's the end of chapter 8. Um, make sure to tell somebody your favorite part um, of this chapter. Thank you.